Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to start Asian pears from seeds. So here I have two different pear varieties and this one is called the Hosui and this is called the Olympic which is also referred to as the Korean giant. So these can get a little larger and um, these are usually around this, these sizes. This is a good size here, but the giant can get really big. That's why they call it the Korean giant. And these pears store really, really well. So it will last a few months in the fridge. So I have this here for probably since uh, uh, December. So <laughs> it's been a month now that I have it in my refrigerator. I have a few other seeds uh, that I picked out from a, one that I've eaten already and I already started it and it grew already. So I'm going to show you those seeds and then um, we'll come back and I'll show you how to prepare this to, to, uh, to grow. That way you can grow your own Asian pear tree in your backyard. So before you uh, decide to grow pear trees, I think you should do a little bit research. So I'll provide a bit of information now so that you would know exactly what to expect. So Asian pears are very cold hardy varieties. So they will grow from zone uh, four to eight, maybe even nine. Some, some, some will grow in the, in the warmer climate. So the seeds do need some chill hours in order to sprout. So at this time of the year, which uh, I live in Texas, it's, uh, it's January now, mid-January. And the weather temperature is around 40s, sometimes 30s uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, as long as the, it's not freezing, uh, I think in the 40s uh, degrees Fahrenheit is the best time. If you're doing this in the summer, uh, you can actually use your refrigerator too. So I'm going to show you the easy way where you just do this outside in the, in the cool months. That way you don't have to uh, mess with your refrigerator and uh, get in trouble for that. So anyway, let's go outside and take a look at the pear seeds, uh, seedlings that I've already started. And then we'll come back and do this. All right, guys, I am here in my backyard and I have this little cup here. This is just a coffee cup that I recycle and um, it's just sitting outside. I have some wet paper towel here and then my seeds I left it inside the paper towel and I just uh, placed the cup there outside uh, where the temperature is around 40s uh, uh, degrees Fahrenheit so look at that all of these seeds here it's it's uh, it's actually past its prime to be transplanted so that's what happens when you wait too long so it looks like uh, this one's already sprouted so it looks like all of this seed sprouted. Look at this. So I have one, two, three, four, five seedlings that sprouted. So now you can transfer this into uh, containers or like a, a small cup and allow it to grow. And uh, they will grow outside in the cold temperature, which is fine. So as long as it's not freezing, um, down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit these these seedlings will be fine so you can add soil to this and then transplant that so that's how you start the seedlings very very simple I'm gonna show you how to do this so let's go inside alright guys before we cut this open to collect the seeds to grow um, there's a few things you should know before you plant trees or any fruit trees from seed the one thing is that the seed that will become a tree may take a long time before it will produce fruits. So if you don't want to invest that much time or just can't wait, then it's best to go to a nursery and grab a tree there. They're not very expensive. I think they, they'll go from like $25 to $50 and you get one that would bear fruits in just a year or two. So check with your local nursery. They do carry certain varieties. Before you choose the varieties, I, I suggest you read it online. And then the second one you should know is that uh, some pear varieties may not be self fertile. So um, there are certain varieties that would just produce without having to have be cross pollinated. And one of it is the Hosui. This is a good variety to, um, to grow just one plant, one tree. 
and it would produce fruits uh, on its own without having another pear tree for cross-pollination. Other varieties like Shinsiki is also a self-fertile variety which produce on its own. But it could be self-fertile in one area and then in the different climate it may not. But those two are the safe ones. I also have the Eshinko variety which uh, is listed as not self-fertile. But they, they are semi-self-fertile, so they will uh, produce on their own without having another variety to cross-pollinate. So cross-pollination is very important when you grow Asian pear trees, Asian pear fruits, or other fruit trees in general. So make sure you read on that and uh, be aware that you may have to grow more than one tree. So uh, let me summarize again. It's going to take a long time to bear fruits from uh, growing from seed. And also you may need different varieties to pollinate your pear trees depending on what you're, you're growing. So the Korean giant is what I'm going to do. I suggest being very careful when cutting the pear open because the seed is right down the center. So I will just cut it like this. I usually skin the fruit, the, the, the skin out to peel it off before I eat it. But... The skin is edible. I just don't like the texture. So as you can see there, they're called apple pear for a reason because they the texture and all that looks very similar to an apple. There's so many different varieties. So when, when you use the general term Asian pear, it's really difficult to know what varieties uh, they are. Uh, also, there's a Japanese word called nashi. That is also uh, just a word for pear. So if you see people label their plant as nashi pear, it, um, it really doesn't say much. It's basically saying pear pear. So research your varieties um, because some can live in cooler temperatures. Some could withstand more diseases and all that stuff. So if you live in the south where temperature is warm and uh, you have fire blights and stuff like that make sure you get a varieties that is highly resistant to fire blights and that is why I grew the Shinko. Shinko is a good one. So here are the seeds as you can see. So we're gonna take them out. Each of these pair will have like five to eight seeds. So just just take them out and and I'll show you what to do next. All right, guys, we have our seeds uh, removed. And uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, that is a good amount of seeds to, uh, to begin with because not all of them will sprout. So what we're going to do now is take a cup like this or anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this exact cup. And then we're going to get some paper towel here. And then you're going to soak this in water. Okay. And then kind of squeeze it a little bit to get the excess water out. You don't want it dripping because you don't have, it doesn't need to be uh, super wet like that. Just wet, but not dripping wet. You see, there's no water coming out of it. Because we're going to put this outside. I'm, you can put this in your refrigerator if you like. But, uh. I'm not allowed to do that, so <laughs> I'll just leave this outside in the cold and they will do just fine and they will sprout because as you can see earlier, I showed you the the five that we had. Okay, and then um, also one more piece of information that I forgot. When you grow pear trees from seeds, one pro potential problem is that it may not taste exactly like the original fruits that the that you you gather the seeds from because of cross pollination and all that stuff so your pears may come out to be like a hybrid or something so if you have two pear trees or if your neighbor also has a pear tree somewhere 100 feet away 
that pear could potentially pollinate your pear tree and then the fruits may come out to be a hybrid that is the reason why people propagate or clones or whatever you want to call it or buy stuff at the at the nursery because at the nursery they they usually select uh, really good tasting varieties um, because that's what the customer demand and then um, they just propagate the same tree over and over and then you get the exact duplicate uh, you know like exact fruit exact taste, texture, and all that, that stuff. So growing from seed is very exciting. At the same time, it could be a mystery because it may not turn out how you want it. So uh, make that that's the three things that you need to keep in mind, okay? Uh, how long it would take, and if your variety require pollination from another pair, and uh, the unexpected uh, flavor or taste or how it may turn out to be a hybrid. Okay, so we'll put it in here, like that. Close it up, this would keep the moisture in. And then we're gonna take this back outside and place it in one of those uh, a container or if you, anywhere you want to just to keep it outside. Put this in your refrigerator if you like, if you're allowed to do that. That's it guys, so I'm gonna leave this outside. I don't need to show you because you already saw the space. And then I'll come back uh, once they sprout it and then I will show you what they look like. Also, make sure you label, <laughs> just in case you, you start multiple stuff. So we will be back soon. All right, guys, here it is 10 days later, and let's see what's going on in here. I checked a few days ago and they sprouted already. So I just take out my paper, and look at that. All of the seeds except that one sprouted. So now you can take these out. And then plant them in uh, your containers and then let them grow into little pear trees all right guys since we have so many seeds sprouted we're gonna take a few to experiment with and I'm gonna test them in mini hydroponic systems the same way I did for these here As you can see I made a bunch of videos on this already so if you haven't seen it make sure to check it out and here is a pepper tree that i did the same thing with the only thing i did here that's different is that i use the entire container the whole water bottle instead of the half size that i cut out so so just cut this at the top instead of half that way it gives you more reservoir space and look at all those peppers from this tiny little tree very very cool and i actually have two that are fruiting right here and I have a bunch of smaller size that haven't fruited yet okay so let's take our seeds out and then we'll try the mini hydro system method so here are all of our seeds there and I ran out of net cups so I have these mini pots for little plants that I bought so that'll work as well so that's what I'm gonna use okay here's just some water from my faucet and what we're going to do here is take this mini pots here and then we'll put the rock wood cube in like that but before we do that we're going to take the seed and place it in here so I'm going to go ahead and dunk it in here just to make it get it all nice and wet. And then we'll take one of the seeds. Whoops. They're very slippery. So I'm going to see if I can cut the shell off so that the the seedling can grow better I'm just gonna use my scissor and see if I can cut it out
So it came right off. Now I'm going to try to peel it off. And there it is. I guess that worked. So now we're going to put that into a rock wool. I'm just going to use this chopstick. And then put this in, root facing down. And then we'll close it up a little bit like that. this in here drop that into our container and then I have these koozie okay there you have it and then I'm going to put it uh, in my tent I'm gonna cover it up with a ziploc bag to keep moisture in and that is it so uh, let me show you where I'm gonna put the plants alright guys here we are in my tent and here is where they're gonna go this one here is the Korean giant and that one there is the Hosui and the Korean giant as you can see the there's a little plant there I actually removed the shell this one here the roots came out but the shed was still on so I left it as they are. So this is where they're gonna stay. I have a heat mat here, grow light there so they should be growing fine. Alright guys it has been exactly two weeks since we transplanted the seeds into these mini systems and initially they were sitting in these cups here and then I realized that the cup didn't have enough holes so the roots were having trouble getting through. So then I decided that I'm gonna take the, the rock wool out of this here and then place it in the actual net cup right here. And as you can see, look at that. The roots can come through easily and within two weeks it's grown to this size from the little sprout that you saw earlier. So in hydro, they just grow super fast so um, two weeks for a tree to get to this size is actually a, a very, very good progress. So um, I would recommend trying this out, try to speed up your, your seedlings and get them to a good size. And then after that, you can move it outside and it'll just give you a bit of a, a head start on uh, some of the seedlings for your trees. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this experiment and uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it below and thank you so much for watching.